Hey folks, Quillikeen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play EU4, the Cossacks expansion. Oh, look, the Uzbeks are having a hard time. Excellent. We're playing as the Oirat Horde. We're about to declare some wars over there. Uh, between episodes, I remember that uh, I have rivals. I uh, went and issued an embargo against Buryatia. I can't um, embargo Uzbeks because we have a truce. We might be able to insult them, but I don't think it does anything because we are in a truce. They don't stack either, so we'll just install Buryatia relatively soon. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go and wait 16 days because we don't have a diplomat. And go. We're going to declare war. And we're going to cobalagerize Sarag Yogar. Not that I think we need to. Um, obviously, they're allies. They're all singletons, so it should be pretty easy to stomp. We actually have the extra advantage of having a specific mission to remove Sarag Yogar from the map. We don't have to do it by um, declaring on them directly. We just have to make sure that they don't exist. So cobalagerize them just to make sure it's good. We got the tribal feud. We got, like, unlimited CBs all the time because we are a tribe. No need to call in any of our allies whatsoever. We'll declare war. We'll defeat half this guy's army here, and then we'll kill the other half momentarily. That came home. Uh, they are a horde, so they'll get the 25% um, shock bonus. But I'm hoping we can just shatter these guys completely before their allies show up. Done. Excellent. And we will very happily attack them on our own territory. So we should get this battle. I like this little indicator. I don't have to necessarily compare dates between the movements of the two things. This implies that we will be catching them, and indeed that is what's going to happen. I should have maybe done a consolidate first, because some of my armies wouldn't have been fully armored, but no, we're fine. Um, I'm going to stop here. I am going to break off my infantry this way. Consolidate them. So again, a priority is to reinforce the cavalry. I'm going to split you guys in half. Send you over there, since there's already a dude, so we may as well send the leader there and you over there, and that should be able to siege out both pieces of property. Easy peasy. And we'll have enough admin uh, points to go and core them both. And apparently, no one cares if hordes declare war on people unless you're allied to people. Um, so aggressive expansion is apparently really not a problem. This is a fun way to play the game, you guys. All right, won that easy battle, obviously, so now we will just go ahead and wait. Things are going to shape up, shake up over here, these guys. All three of these are my allies right now, but inevitably they're not going to like each other. So something is going to happen. Also, Buryata is our next more uh, considerable war target. However, we don't have a CB against them. And I don't think there's a way for us to fabricate a claim. Nope, because we don't border. So they are a rival. I haven't um, embargoed them. Uh, it'd be nice if Mongolia were to fabricate a claim over here. I don't think there's really a way for me to do that. No longer called into wars. Actually, I should do that with Mongolia. Because they're not really helping anyway. It'll be a little relevant with Buryata or, or the Ming because, um, I mean, do they not get called into any wars? Even defensive ones? Because, yeah, if we get attacked over here, Mongolia will probably get invaded, in which case they will defend themselves. But because they're a disloyal subject, they won't go and help me in wars. They're just going to sit at home and do nothing. And there's not a whole lot I can do about that. I don't know. I'm still thinking at some point we'll release Mongolia and then eat them up later on. But we may as well keep them now. I mean, we've got other things to eat, right? We're in no rush to eat that. Um, do our cores ever expire over here? Subject is control of the province, so presumably that means it's never expiring because it's not telling me about it. So that's good. All right, let's go. Uh, money's not great. Uh, once I am done converting this last province and maybe some more conversions over here, I will probably go and boot this missionary just so we can get a little bit more income. I mean, it is coming, but it's not its not great. We are not at our force limit, and we are building expensive cavalry, which are more expensive to build and also more expensive to maintain, but they're very effective for us, so we're going to keep focusing on that, because why not? Okay, you, I should be able to separate piece you out and just eat you. Oops. Maybe... No. Because would mean their end. So I'll have to wait until I legitimately get 100%, or they just get a little bit more war exhaustion, which will happen pretty quickly. No, actually, the enthusiasm of Cardell is already low. So good on us for that. Okay, so now we've got both. Um, I could just negotiate one piece. Although, if I s negotiate separate pieces, I can... So let me clear, make sure everything's okay. I can eat you and specifically take all your cash... There's nothing else to do. Because then, in a separate piece deal, I can make sure to take all of these guys' cash. 
Because I think I could have taken both provinces in negotiating with the war leader, but I would have only been able to take the war leader's money, I'm pretty sure. So we're going to do that. And we'll have lots of money to go around. Boom. Which is good, because we might need to get some emergency mercenaries. Our prestige sucks. We have uncontested cores. Oh, that's the ones on Ming. Um, too few rivals. Calm. Ooh, that's probably a really good idea. Who are you allied with? Gouge. Which is over there and insignificant. What a perfect rival for us. Calm. Welcome to the Orite party. It's alright. <laughs> probably more like Orite. But yeah. Anyway, uh, moving over there. Horde unity is only 94%. Which means it might be a very sexy thing to go and raise some provinces. That'll give me four horde unity. I mean nine, which is overkill. Let's just do this. Just try to keep it nice and high. A little bit of raising. A little bit of uh, military power. Not any loot, because we looted it all. That's okay, though. We'll do that. And then go ahead and core both. So having this horde unity is great for that reduced national unrest. That discipline bonus is sexy. States want some more territory. Yeah, they want 33% of the land. Um, and if I do give them something better, like something with a proper city, they'll get uh, stronger. Uh, but what I'm going to do is give them this province over here. The one I just raised. So we're going to see that a lot. There we go. That is satisfying to them. And they do give you a big bonus to manpower. So there is something to be said about giving them more valuable provinces, but then you do get the 50% autonomy, which means you get less money. So like, that's the thing. One of the big issues with autonomy is that you do get less manpower. Also less force limit if there's more autonomy. Now, the tribes do not help with the force limit problem, but they do correct and, in fact, massively overcorrect the manpower problem and giving you a pretty substantial boost over there. And the, those provinces are a great place to invest uh, manpower in because the bonus to manpower is going to be good. Ooh! Desert and Arctic? Or just telling you the different things. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. Maybe I shouldn't give tribes desert tiles because there's not as much manpower as a base. That's that's a good optimization, uh, optimization to keep in mind in the future. So drylands isn't a thing. Oh, it's also more expensive to develop. But maybe give them some proper steps. Well, that's mountain. Um, here's proper steps. Something interesting to consider. Okay, military divided. Um, we can get 20% more fort defense or 10% more siege ability. Um, I'm going to go with siege ability. I only have one fort, and really, if I go offensive, I want to siege stuff. They're actually having rebel problems, which is fantastic. Some separatists. Well, obviously, we can't declare war right now. We are going to have to legitimately wait until we get some actual manpower before we fight against an actual enemy. Um, and, of course, in the meantime, we can just... Um, you know, let some of this rebel threat go down, our manpower go up. I think this is going to be a great time, for the first time in the game, for me to bring my army maintenance down to zero, bank a little bit of extra cash. Of course, it means our current military won't get reinforced, but we got room in the manpower pool, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, we have gone and done that. Once these two things get cored, we'll be able to convert them as well. So I'll keep my missionary advisor for now, even though he's currently sitting a bit idle, but that's okay. Of course, not going to take that long. You... Mongol's desire is down to 74%. That's great. Uh, and maybe some of these interactions. Would, well, I mean, I, I don't know. We can grant them provinces. That might be a way for us to... I don't know if it lowers their liberty desire. I think it might, actually. So we may be able to give the Mongols a little bit more territory and then annex them. We'll see. Tensions between nomads and sedentary populations. Hmm. We can reprimand the, she the chiefs. It will cost them loyalty and influence. So that's interesting because too much influence does make these guys dangerous, right? More than 80%, they're at risk of seizing a nation. But too little and I lose some of my bonuses. Oh my god. That's That would be 18 separatists in one province. Yeah, they get more loyalty and more influence. Maybe we get a bigger bonus. I don't know. Need to wait for, like, this is, again, we're playing pre-release still at this point. By the time you're watching this, it might not be pre-release. But I'm still playing this pre-release, so we don't have, like, I don't I don't know what the stats on the tribes are at higher level. It doesn't tell us, tells us the difference at loyalty levels, but clearly the influence changed some of these to, from 10% to 15%, which is a whole nother thing. Um, I can't deal with eight, an 18 stack of separatists in one province. I mean, maybe I could, but it would be too costly. In manpower, I might have to get mercs. So we'll do this. They'll lose a little bit of loyalty. They'll Yeah, see? As soon as I think they slip below the 40%, 
then this switches from 15% bonus to 10% bonus. So I would like their influence to be just above 40. Not too high, but just above 40 would be nice. So our manpower will recharge a little bit slower now. And it's not the end of the world. Oh my god, you guys are having huge problems. I think you're going to have separatist things. You might actually stop being a valid um, target for uh, rivalry. Oh. Okay, coring, and that means we can start converting in, which will be very nice. Religious unity is 90%, which isn't bad, considering the uh, religious sort of fractionalism that you get in this area. That's actually... I'm pretty pleased with that. Of course, the big thing will be declaring on Ming, and that's when we're going to call in all of our favors. More conversions. We can invest in you. Oh, yes, the military tech. Uh, I don't have to rush it. There's always a chance one of my neighbors will get this first, giving us a 5% discount. So we're going to hold off. We're not currently fighting, so I don't need these stats yet. We're going to literally wait until we're doing a fight, uh, or about to do a fight, and then we'll go ahead and engage the Pike Square. Military tactics, excellent. The extra morale, excellent. Really going to help us fight pretty consider considerably. But for now, we can just sit around. What I could do is I'm just going to go ahead and boost the army maintenance for a couple of months, just until our armies are reinforced at this point. We have a little bit of pool, we have a little bit of money. I mean, it's got to be reinforced at some point, so it doesn't really matter when I do it. I could do it slowly, I could do it fast, but this way I'll at least know what's going on. Mostly get them filled out. Oh, okay. Hey, my full maintenance. What a great time for that. Korchin is being attacked by Buryata. No. The war they've started. Okay, so Korchin is attacking Buryata. Um, I am very much in favor of this. What I should have actually said, though. Hey, listen, I would like to grab some territory over here before I join in. I, pro I don't know if that <laughs> matters, but I want I want a toehold in Buryata. I'm not going to go crazy claiming too much. Oh, Korchin, there's a little bit of Drama Llama over this, actually. I'm going to imply that I would like some land. I'm going to join. I don't want to lose the prestige. Keep the ally. And again, this is a rival, so I'm not going to turn down a call against a rival. That would be crazy sauce. So we will accept. Just them defending alone? Yeah, because the call for... The defensive call goes out first. Let's move in. And I guess we're going to go ahead and take our military technology. No 5% discount for us. So the next level is good. The extra 50% supply limit is huge. The combat with bonus is okay. Um, and more shock for infantry and cavalry is really good, especially as nomads, because we get a further 25% when we're fighting on our own steps. Next level is really good. Potentially still worth aiming for. Again, at some point, I probably will want to develop my province's military instead. But that's pretty good. Ooh, you have some enemy troops in there right away. I'm going to focus on taking territory first. That's actually going to be my primary goal. Most likely he won't give me this, though. Um, maybe I can negotiate a separate piece if I just hold on to the territory. In particular, we're actually going to be able to get 100% territory very, very quickly. We're going to be... Oh, yeah, we're going to control 100% of the land very fast. Which should lead us to be able to negotiate a peace deal very, very quickly. I'm going to move here. It's going to be a lot of extra attrition, but man, I guess I could wait here. No, I'm going to move here. Fine. I'm going to lock this up. That merchant suffering. Um, 10 diplomatic power is nothing, but neither is losing a little bit of um, power in a distant trade node. It's hardly going to affect anything we do. How's the attrition? It's only 1%. Although winter just kicked in, I was going to say it's going to go up to 2%. Excellent. Let's go ahead and get in there. You guys can fight over there. Ooh, you'll actually lose. Nope, you won! Oh, okay. And that probably means they'll come over here and get stack wiped. Just in case, I'm going to go and get a trio to stand there in case they run to there. Most likely they'll come here. They might go to the other province. You know what? Let's do that. Plus, it lowers. Uh, now that there's not a big army going around, I'm fine with separating things up. It eliminates some of the attrition, which is good. And I, no matter where they go in their territory, we're going to stack wipe them when they arrive. Well, they're going to get a tick of morale. So we'll see. We're still progressing here, which is good. And if we stack wipe them, the that will count as war contribution in our favor, which is nice. So I'm going to separate piece out. I'm going to screw my ally, I'm going to separate piece out and take territory that he in fact likes. Just because I want to own a province in here so that I can fabricate claims adjacently and different things like that. Oh, oh, you were too deep. You actually got stack wiped way over there. Oh, all right. 
Well then, I guess that's fine. You're going to clear that up. I'm thinking about assaulting. Uzbek declared war on no guy. Hmm. We're at 4-4. Four, four. Cut off our lines and jump in. I don't have the manpower. No guy, go away. It's not necessarily the end of the world. Come on, baby. 50 chance. Yes. Okay. We are paused. 100% war score. We can negotiate. I can't take that. But I can take everything else over here. Which is probably going to upset my partner. Doesn't really say anything about it over here. But he's my rival. I'm going to take land from my rival. Take some money. Ooh. Um, actually. Oh, it's 40%. How come it was 30% somewhere else? Maybe because it has to do with the war declaration type? Oh, okay. I can take all your provinces. One, two, three. Be humiliated and take a bunch of money. Oh, there we go. Right there. 94% war score. Excellent! That sounds great! I have no idea what this is going to do with Korchin. That power projection, though. We are at plus 100%. Actually, we may have been overkill. Maybe I didn't need to humiliate. I didn't even check. How do you feel about that, bud? They want my provinces. Which is only counting as minus three, even though they want a lot of my provinces. That seems to have gone pretty well for us, actually. Oh, and because they're not connected, this is great. So this is the new, um... Let's see... Political map mode? No. Geographical map mode. Areas. So... The world is divided into these areas now. Every province belongs to one area. Every area belongs to one region. Every region belongs to potentially a subcontinent, but also a continent. So like down here, there's the subcontinent whoops, of, of India within the continent of Asia. And so when your territory is not connected to your capital, it's called an exclave. And so this is Oriat uh, Buryata. And in fact, if I continue to expand over here without connecting it to the rest of it, it would eventually start to be renamed as Oriat Asia. Um, which is kind of funny, but there we go. I do like this new naming mechanism. I think it's going to add a lot more interesting stuff. That is some expensive cores. Ooh, the development's a lot higher. Well, all right, and we have to core them one at a time, which is a wee bit annoying. However, since we can't core them yet anyway, should we just raise them for some points? They're good provinces. Now, my Horde unity is really good right now. No, we'll leave it around there. It's going to be expensive, but I'm not really doing anything else with my admin points just because teching up is kind of expensive and prohibitive. So we'll do that. I'll um, group up the troops together. Not that we're getting an uprising instantly, but we will get an uprising soonish. Do I want to lower my maintenance? I think we'll leave it up just to delay the um, uprising. Okay, and that they ended their war there. Of course, got our tribal CB over here. We could consider, like, you know, breaking off all those alliances and starting to go to work. Which would be interesting. These guys are already the right religion as well. They're Tengri, which is great for me. Cardell Separatists within the next year. Okay, so what I should do, actually, is grab these dudes and move them outside of Hami over here. Maybe even on Hami. Well, let's group up here, make sure we're all in one, and then maybe we'll move into Hami. Which, of course, will delay the uprising. But that's okay. Ah, it's demand control of estates. Okay, I'm going to give you one of these estates. It's grassland, which means good manpower base. I think that's going to be okay. It's a very powerful estate. So, how does that... I mean, obviously, it's still they're still demanding a percentage. Oh, those tribes reprimanded is a duration-based thing, so they will bounce back from that. Then let's give them another little cheap one. Alright, let's give them this one. It's already at 43% autonomy, so what the hell. There we are, that goes gets rid of that. And again, these are good places to give uh, military power to, although the cost is more expensive because it's mountain, which I have to remember. Uh, we are going to repay that loan. We have a lot of money. 
Excellent. And we do have a little bit of extra manpower. We are basically reinforced, so I think this is going to be a swell time for us to go ahead, not using the army builder or anything like that, it's not the end of the world, to build a trio more of cavalry. Getting closer to our force limit. Wow, well, we're still got a long way to go. We keep expiring. Fission integration just went away. That was the faster reduction of autonomy. It's going to be sad to see that go. Good expansion over here, though. We're really happy about how that went. Do, 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 do. All right, good enough. And then you can join in there. And we'll have to wait for the coring to do... How much is our actual income right now? Might be enough to run more advisors, but I don't know. Is it possible for us to not get attrition over here? A supply limit is 15, actually, which isn't bad. And then, yeah, we've, yeah, that's going to be totally fine. Especially when we group them together and then we have the maneuver to give some discounts, which is good. I keep wanting to hit this button because it's there. The button shouldn't be there if you can't actually, you know, do the cores. On the other hand, it does remind you to save admin power, so I guess there's some value there. Truce with the Uzbeks? Oh, it's a long way away. How is the Uzbek thing going on, by the way? Oh, the Golden Horde. You called in. Okay, you're actually fighting multiple wars. You're fighting one war. But you called in all your allies, which means you called in your favors. That's very interesting. You know what be handy is a quick way to see what all your favor is with everyone. Okay, see, the, the Korchin is a little further behind because um, we weren't allied for a while. Because I forgot about that. Also, they're a little bit bigger. Where Zhang Zhu is the oldest one, sure, but it's also a little bit smaller, so that it might grow a little faster, although they did expand their borders a wee bit, which is nice too. So we are getting close to the ability to call these in offensively, which is nice. Um, I probably am lacking a rival. Ming's only 73% ahead now. They were like 200%, so this is getting better. Yarkand is probably the most sensible next target, especially since they have no allies. I know I was saying I was going to be friendly to them. I don't have like an extra relationship slot, though. Yeah. It's time. You're squishy. You're going to be the next target. What is my current mission? Improve the prestige. Which is getting there. Still have uncontested cores on Ming. But we are getting there. And I think we're going to be able to take on Yarkin relatively soon. Again, we'll wait for um, the next Rebellion Rave. Certainly. There's going to be some bad ones there too, but we've got Rebellion growing here and here, and then we'll get the Buryat ones as well. Uh, and of course, Coring is going to be a pain and slow some of this down, and that's going to be very annoying. Um, so we'll play that one by ear. We do have some more money. Oh, you know what we'll do? We'll do the thing where we uh, directly order up some cavalry over here. It'll get built somewhere appropriate, and it'll automatically walk over and join this army, which is going to be great. Um, medical evolution, 25% goods produced, or gain 15 power. I do like power. That's only two years. All right, power it is. It's only 15 power, but it's only two years. So we'll take the power. And more manpower. Oh, spare no expense. Actually, Diplo power is not that handy for us. And compared to the min, usually I always do this. Now, because you know what, one inflation takes 75 power, so we come out slightly ahead. Now, you know what, I'm going to use caution, it's fine. Okay, we got attacked there, uh, as expected, but um, lower numbers. We, as the defender, are going to get the shock damage here. We get bad rolls, but we should be able to crush this perfectly fine. We're going to gain mercantilism. Because, again, that is very hard for us to raise otherwise. We are going to move over to here, which should be where the next rebellion is. Curious to see if these uh, troops will continue to chase us. No. They just go to the province where this army was when it was spawned. What about the next ones? Will they spawn where this is? That will be an interesting question. Taking out Yarkin should be pretty easy. Alright, where are you going? Now you're just going to go there. So you're going to go to the province where I ordered troops where my troops were at the time where I ordered them, and then you'll auto-merge there, which is probably desirable. That way they're not chasing you all over the map and potentially through dangerous territory. Many ages ago, Mongol rulers adopted the Buddhist religion and sought to spread it among their people. Over the years, however, many have returned the old ways of shamans. Esenkoros has always been fascinated with the legacy of the likes of Kublai Khan. Who's Esenkoros? Is that me? That oh, is me. 
Uh, Kublai Khan, the empire they once created in the name of their religion. His word reaches reach us of a dynamic and growing Tibetan monastic order. It was therefore clear to him that this needed to be investigated. The emissary of the Lama now stands before us and has explained that the Lama indeed expects that Essen Koros is a reincarnation of Kublai Khan. I like it. He's also prepared to support our rule if we allow him to spread his sect through the lands we control. Whoa! So we can convert to Buddhism, to one of the flavors of Buddhism. Which is actually what we've been converting our people away from. It would give us until the end of the game, plus one tolerance to the true faith. So everywhere that was Buddhist would be even less likely to rebel. Or can stick to the old ways and gain prestige. I like this Tengri thing. I think it's going to be fun to play with. It's different. We haven't done it before. Although we haven't done much with the Buddhist stuff either. And that has changed, you know, a little bit over the years. So that might be fun to play with. But we specifically have a goal to raise our prestige. And I like the Tengri thing. We're going to keep it going. It'll also help with some of the Sunni nonsense but we're, as we spread west. So that's good. Um, or, you know, we've got some variety. We're going to stick to the old ways. Take the prestige. That did sound really interesting, though. Cool described event. I like the idea of being... Uh, Kublai Khan regener uh, resurrected. Oh, we are above our force limit now. Just barely. So let's go ahead and grab one of these dudes and move them back over here. That's going to be okay. Just barely over. How's the coin progress going on? A little over halfway done. Then we can start the next one. Really? Still? No, I guess that makes sense. Pop out there. But yeah, going after Yarkin will be very nice. How far away with the rebellion are we? Oh, it's actually going negative with our people standing here. That's interesting. That's the other thing is we can build buildings. Actually, that's a great point. I've got some money right now. Why don't I build some buildings? All I can do is build the fence. Get some extra forts, which will cause maintenance going forward. Might not be a terrible idea. I mean, I might want a fort on the border of the Ming. The other thing, too is, of course, if you have a fully maintained fort, which I literally don't have a fort right now, at all, anywhere. But if you did, where do you get the stat on, like... So if we did, I think we would get some free army tradition, right? So you're paying some maintenance for that. Do we want one? Do we want on the border of the, uh, the Uzbeks to hurt their future expansion? into my territory, or for doing the Ming. No, we're going to save the money for emergency mercs. I think that'd actually be a better choice. Hey, the unrest was never that high over here with the tolerance. I mean, we're getting minus 3.5 from the friendly troops, which is the big power over here. And we're only, what, 30% overextended? 32, and we will finish this one soon, which will drop me to 22% overextended. We probably can't eat all of Yarkand in that time, though. God, it's tempting. Well, in any case, we got to put a cut in here. Next time, we might start off by, like, very rapidly declaring on Yarkand. It's very tempting to do, actually. And I think we might do just that. Okay, those Separatists have gone completely, so even if I leave, it would take a while for that to build up again. Certainly, we'll get some over here soon. 2.4 years, that's not too bad. We've got no manpower. Who needs manpower? <laughs> See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.